Right here, outside the Snapdragon Stadium, Manchester United have lost to Wrexham 3-1 on Manchester United's under-21s if you want to get technical. Uh, and I found it a really interesting game. Uh, first half, first 20 minutes or so especially, watching United, watching the kids move around some real fucking cool patterns. Uh, taking the ball under pressure when they had people all over them, taking it, receiving it, getting on the turn, moving it up the pitch when they had multiples around them. And it was really good to see them. And what was working for them was playing it in front of someone, running onto it, playing it in front of somebody else, getting on it, minimal touches, moving it onto someone else. And it was really, really good to see. Through the first two thirds, absolutely smashing it. Final third, we had nothing. And that was the major difference. In the final third, Wrexham were clinical. In the final third, Manchester United didn't really penetrate. And because of that, they score and we don't. Now their goals, the first two at least, came from lower level football 101, if you want to get into it. That move where it goes up to the winger, gets set back for the fullback who crosses one in, someone gets on it at the back post. I've seen that move so many times, but it's effective. And it's effective when Bishop doesn't come off his line the way he didn't, and hopefully that's something he learns from. Um, you get you get done like that. For the second goal, really similar, long throw into the box. It's flicked on at the front post and it's buried at the second. That is the sort of stuff that you've got to learn. And we, we obviously recently found out as we left the stadium as well that Paul Mullins actually punctured a lung from the challenge early in the first half. Now, for me, that was a red card. Dan Goals wasn't a red card, that was a red card and it felt like the referee was trying to redress the balance for not sending off Bishop in the first half. Maybe he didn't send him because it was friendly, but either way I thought that would have warranted it and I don't think the challenge that Dan Go ended up getting a red card for really warranted it in the slightest. I thought that was harsh at, to be the very least. Um, but I like the idea of these games. I, I think that they offer a lot and I don't just want to see United repeat this, I want to see United expand this because I think this is something that would be really beneficial. Anyone who's watched my stuff for a long enough time will know that I believe that academy football isn't fit for purpose. I don't think academy football prepares players for the highest level. If you're good enough coming out of the gate, 15, 16, 17, and absolutely on fire, even maybe at 18, you can go from playing that level of football because you're still playing against people older than you generally into the first team. And the transition isn't as weird, isn't as crazy, as even though it, it technically is bigger and wider. I think those players that require a little bit more polishing, which is 99% of players, by the way, I think they're the ones who benefit from being maybe going on loan, maybe experiencing this sort of football. Because not all football, and this is why coming in and playing first team football for United and not needing to go out on loan actually makes it work better sometimes. Because the way you're going to be playing in the academy and the way you're going to be playing in the first team is actually much more closely aligned. If you're looking at what happens when you go to play for a League One team or a, a, a League Two team, you're going to be asked to play a brand of football that doesn't really make sense to those that have come through academies. And one of the reasons why academy football isn't fit for purpose is because it's academies playing against academies. Whether you're playing for Stoke, Ross County, Manchester United or fucking Chelsea, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. Everything that they're doing is all based on the, um, the England and the, the FA's elite player performance pathway. And the fundamentals that are set out in there are we will play out from the back, we'll have a goalkeeper that wants to have the ball at his feet, we'll move the ball through the thirds, uh, looking for overloads in the midfield and looking for check backs and passes in and around the box. And when you saw United's kids playing tonight, that was what they were trying to do. No one had the X factor. I thought Hannibal looked quite tasty when he had the ball. I thought Alvaro Fernandez is worth a mention and, and potentially someone that might get a bit more of a career on the back end of doing this. But being real, being as honest as I can with you, it was academy players against professional players. And the professional players didn't play as pretty, didn't make the patterns the same, but scored two goals uh, and looked like it was almost done when they did. Uh, although United obviously got one back before uh, half time. And that's why I want to see these games expanded and delivered more of. If there is more opportunities for these kids to play against that sort of opposition, it will make them more rounded. The academy game where it's just playing out possession-based football versus possession-based football doesn't really uh, allow them to learn stuff. That's why you're gonna see so all sorts of different nationalities coming into the English game at the academy level because they're gonna bring a different flavor and a different mentality. And those different flavors, different mentalities, different way of thinking, different mindsets, that's gonna set you apart from the same, 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 same that everyone's sort of riddled with a little bit now obviously as someone that's a coach myself and someone that's trying to develop an academy with Stratford Paddock 
this is a topic that absolutely grips me and it's a topic that I am generally really really passionate about is the development of youth players and youth football I want to see the players that get you on your feet. I want to see players that have got the, the confidence and the arrogance and the technical ability to be able to get the crowd on their feet, take someone on and go and score a goal. That is why we all fell in love with football and I think that has been coached out of people. And I want to see a, an approach that puts that back into them. You know, a lot of these kids will not play for Manchester United. There's a good chance none of them end up playing there's a good chance none of them end up playing 100 games for Manchester United or 50 games for Manchester United. I think that's the point where you say, I've made it, I'm in. And that means they're going to play lower level football. That means they're going to play League One, League Two, Championship, this sort of thing. And if they're going to play at that sort of level, they're going to have to deal with them sort of balls. They're going to have to deal with set pieces. They're going to have to deal with long throws coming into the box. They're going to have to deal with all these sorts of things that you do not get trained to deal with in an academy because everyone's talking about you know, development. Are you receiving it? Have you got the correct body shape? This, that, and, other. and sometimes you want them to come against a team of rascals that are going to bat you, that are going to stamp on you at, at corners, that are going to fly into you with an elbow. Is it right? No. But is that the way some of the people play the game? Yeah. So for you to be an effective player, you've got to be able to mix it up. And that's why I like this. And I want to see us do more of this. Take on a team that's going to challenge you. Take on a team that's going to have a different style of play that's going to put you under pressure and force you to think to deal with it because that's how winning's done. And that's the only way you win is by going and taking everything everybody's got to give and, and coming out on top of the, all of that sort of stuff. So that's my thoughts on that anyway. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Any players that you thought could stand out, I, I did it on the Paddock Review. I reckon Alvaro Fernandez, because of the situation around left-back, is the one that might get his opportunity. But I want to know what you guys think. See you in the next one.